experiment six and ductal memory. Uh, experiment six is steam distillation. It's another method for distillation. The difference and the advantage of steam distillation is that the mixture is going to boil at a temperature less than boiling point of water. And I will explain how. The purpose of this experiment is to be able to distill organic compounds that they are sensitive to temperature and they have high boiling point. So we can use a steam distillation. A condition for that is that those compounds must be immiscible in water. They cannot dissolve. Like sodium chloride, you cannot do a steam distillation with sodium chloride, even though it has very high uh, boiling point. Um, so you can um, use this for uh, immiscible um, or water immiscible um, temperature sensitive organic natural product. Difference in the like vapor composition here, when you have a mixture of two miscible um, compound, the vapor is or the pressure, the vapor pressure, it depends on the is the, the it's coming from the sum of the partial pressure of each of the components. But when you have immiscible, they kind of sound the same. So I'm just going to highlight it. When you have two miscible, the vapor pressure or the pressure of the total pressure is going to be sum of partial pressure of each. But if it's for immiscible um, compound in water, the pressure is going to be the pressure or the sum of the vapor pressure of the pure individual components. If water by itself is heated up, is going to start boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. That's the time or a temperature that vapor pressure is going to reach um, 760 at the sea level. Now, if you mix another compound like oil, regardless of how low is the vapor pressure, is going to add something. And there should be like a minimum. It should be at least like five millimeter of mercury vapor pressure from uh, that oil that is immiscible. Because if it's zero, it's not going to be mixed with the, with the steam. So the vapor pressure is also contributed from the oil. As a result, the vapor pressure, the total vapor pressure is going to reach the 760 at a temperature less than 100. Since the temperature is going to be less than 100, that is going to protect the sample from decomposition and less heat is needed for, uh, for distillation. Organic compounds, they must be immiscible. That's the condition, as I said. And the number of moles of each of the components, like water and the organic compound in the vapor for steam distillation, Moles of A, ratio of moles of A to B, it depends on uh, pressure or vapor pressure of A and vapor pressure of B. And why do we need to know this ratio? So we are going to provide enough water. If the vapor pressure of oil is low, let's say at 90 degrees Celsius, at 90 degrees Celsius, just a hypothetical number, uh, vapor pressure of A, which is water, if is 700, okay? Vapor pressure of B is 70. So this is like 10 times as much. Number of moles of water in the vapor 
is going to be 10 times as much as B as well. So when you start getting the distillate, the procedure might ask, might ask you to get like 30 milliliter of the distillate. That 30 milliliter of distillate is not just the oil, it's not the essential oil. If that was the case, the essential oils, they were not that expensive. They are very expensive because how much cinnamon you want to boil in order to get like 10 grams of uh, cinnamon aldehyde, which is the oil of the cinnamon, or how much of cloves you want to boil and distill, steam distill in order to get like 10 grams of eugenol, which is the oil coming from the cloves. So you are going to use a lot of water in this distillation. You want to make sure you have enough water. That's why we are going to now check the setup for the, for the steam distillation. And you see that we add plenty of water and we add, uh, we add plenty of water and we add uh, water reservoir as well to, to make sure that we can add more water whenever is, is needed. So if you check the, the setup for distillation, it is very similar to simple distillation. We have a boiling flask here. We have a boiling flask. The heating mantle and the power regulator is not showing, but is understood that they need to be there. You have your boiling flask. You are, we are using Clayson adapter. This is different. Clayson adapter, the straight side is going to attach to the um, separatory funnel. And inside the separatory funnel, we have water to replenish the water. Whenever we need, we just add more water. This curved side is added to the distillation head or distillation head is connected to this curved side of Clayson uh, adapter. Why do we need this curve here? Natural product, when you heat them up in water, they foam. And you don't want that foam to make its way to the condenser. So this curve is preventing that foam to make to the, to the condenser. It's kind of a safety there. As the water boils, so you get, it generates steam. It gives like lots of energy. And that steam, along with the oil from the natural product, it makes to the condenser, is going to condense in the condenser, and it would uh, go to the receiving container. The water hoses is going to be attached, but we don't turn on the water. We just keep it for emergency in case we have to, or there is like vapor coming out of here. That means that it's not cooling off fast enough. Then we turn on the water. The reason I don't turn on the water at the beginning, because I don't want any of the oil to freeze here. And if it does freeze along the way and it blocks, then we get a closed system and you cannot do distillation in a closed system. It has to be open. At least we have like here is open um, the, the extension from the vacuum adapter. It's, it's open and this end it's open. So we don't want to close that. We don't want freezing along the way. That's why water is there for safety. Okay. We want to look at some of the points to remember. Grease all glass joints because we want to make sure that we have a sealed system. And we also want to avoid breaking of the frozen glass. Like frozen glass, that means glasses that are stuck together. Clayson adapter prevents foam getting into distillation. Separator funnel is used to replenish the water during distillation. So if you see it's drying out, Add more water from the uh, separatory funnel. If the water in separatory funnel is finished and this is drying out, stop the heat right away. What does stopping heat means? You turn off the power regulator, lower the heating mantle, remove the heating mantle right away. Because heating mantle is hot, 
just turning off the power regulator, it doesn't stop the heat. So you have to remove the heating uh, mantle. So when would you stop the distillation? If desired, uh, desired volume is collected. If the distilled was milky first, because is water plus liquid plus oil is milky or is cloudy, and now you're receiving like dripping liquid that is clear, that means there's no more oil. So there's no need to collect more water. You can stop. The temperature, boiling temperature for the mixture is going to be less than 100. If the thermometer temperature reaches 100, that means only water vapor is coming out. And at that point, you just stop the distillation. And if the boiling flask is drying out, you want to stop the distillation. Certainly, you want to drop the, uh, the heating mantle down. After the distillation, in order to separate the oil from the water, we must perform extraction. You already learned about extraction and you can do extraction. Just set up the, this, the separator funnel, pour the mixture into the separator funnel, add the methylene chloride for the extraction, do two step of extraction and separate. Methylene chloride is heavier than water, you collect. And because it could be moist, add calcium chloride pellets in order to remove the moisture. Then you want to evaporate the methylene chloride because you don't need the methylene chloride, you need the oil. So evaporate the methylene chloride using low heat. You also use a wood stick to aid for evaporation. It kind of, I had a friend who was saying that the liquid or the solvent is going to climb up the ladder and it would help the evaporation. Evaporation would take place faster. After the evaporation of the methylene chloride, you end up with oil, which is for cloves, is going to be eugenol. Um, we want to confirm that you got the oil. To confirm the, that you have oil, we do chemical tests. Before doing chemical tests, you want to measure the mass of the product. So you have to follow the step procedure step by step. It tells you to measure the mass of the product first and how to measure the mass of the product by the difference. And then you do the test. To test for uh, permanganate, you follow the procedure from the lab manual, but the fading out of the purple color and appearance of the brown color precipitate that indicates that there is a CC double bond in the molecule. And eugenol has CC double bond. It also has phenol functional group. Uh, for, to test for phenol functional group, you do ferric chloride test. With the ferric chloride test, this mixture is like the ferric chloride is like orange color, but it would change to like a, a greenish color, green or purple color and or in a strong color, that means there is a, a phenol functional group. If both functional groups are present, that means you have uh, eugenol and you have confirmed. You also calculate percent recovery to see how much eugenol you have recovered from the five gram of clothes that you, you start with or the natural product that you you start with and write a good lab report. Um, that's the end of experiment six, uh, pre-lab discussion, which helps you for a pre-lab quiz. Read the experiment as well before you take the pre-lab quiz. Thank you. Thank <music> you.